Okay, yeah, sounds great. So yeah, thanks thanks for joining us. Um, like Chris said, my name is Greg Buter, and I'm, I'm out here in Boulder, Colorado today. So I'm excited here to, to show you guys some of the powerful SOLIDWORKS tools that we have to work with mold. So maybe you guys have attended one of our previous webinars. You know, we've had some on simulation, weldment, or sheet metal design. And this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this pretty similar style. Right? I'm going to go through a few examples and show how the mold tools in SOLIDWORKS can be used to create that core and cavity bodies. Okay, and they're going to be based on your already designed plastic part. So we only have a short amount of time today, so it's not possible to get into these examples really as, as much as I'd like to. Um, there are some tutorials inside SOLIDWORKS, and of course we, Computer Aid Technologies, we offer a mold tool SOLIDWORKS training class. So both of those are great options if you'd like to learn more about using these mold tools inside SOLIDWORKS. So the general topics of today's session revolve around taking a completed design, right, your SOLIDWORKS part that's already modeled, and designing some of the mold tooling required for the production of that part. Having proper draft of the part geometry is going to be required if you want to be able to remove it from that tooling. Undercut is also something that can cause problems if not accounted for. And we'll look at some tools to help us identify those, those geometry problems. Plastic shrinks as it cools, so scaling the parts required to make sure we get that correct size once everything cools. The main thing we'll be doing, though, is creating the, the mold inserts, right, the core and cavity bodies. And like I've said before, it's, it's going to be based on the part that's already designed. And that geometry may require shutoff surfaces for some holes or side cores for undercuts and maybe core pins for your easier um, manufacturing and, and repair. So for my first example, let's use this simple dustpan part here. And I'll step through the process of creating that core and cavity, those bodies. So this file could be a SOLIDWORKS model part or could actually be an imported file if we're working with different customers or CAD systems. So these mold tools, they're not a specific add-in or module. They're just a toolbar that needs to be shown. And this is available in all versions of SOLIDWORKS. So on this toolbar, um, you'll see these mold-specific tools on the right side. Insert mold folders. It's not something we really have to mess with. It gets done automatically. Um, parting lines, shutoff surfaces, parting surface, tooling split. We're going to get into, into all those. So just like popping your ice cubes out of the ice cube tray, we need draft on our part to be able to pop it out of the cavity. So SOLIDWORKS has a draft analysis tool here. And it's going to identify faces that don't meet our defined draft requirements. And we can keep these colors displayed so as we modify the model, things will update. And so even setting our draft goal at 3 degrees, I don't see any, um, yeah, any faces that are going to require it. They would highlight yellow if, if we did. So to account for shrinkage, we want to increase the size of the part. And we have to do that before we start the tooling. So we can use a scale command. And I'm going to increase this. All right, there's that one. So let's do 3% larger. And then next, let's establish the parting line. And this will eventually define where the two halves of the tooling are split. So SOLIDWORKS is going to rerun draft analysis here. And it's going to recognize where the transition from positive to negative draft occurs. And this is where it's going to create this automatic parting line. And there might be something like, I don't know, 28 edges that are selected for us here, um, something like that. And this yellow message box is telling us some critical info here, right? It's saying the parting line is complete, but there's still work to be done. Right? It's not able to separate the halves. And that's going to be due to the, the handle, right? There's a hole in the handle there. And that's going to require a shutoff surface to be defined. And if you didn't catch that message, I'm going to edit this. Because I used that rerunning of the draft analysis, but I just wanted to mention that I could actually manually select all these. There's a pretty cool selection tool here. So you'll see this red arrow. And as I click that edge, if I hit keys on my keyboard, Y and N for yes and no, it continues down that path as it selects these adjacent edges. And this is actually really convenient, because if I was manually choosing these, this will prevent me from skipping over maybe a real small edge. All right, so canceled out of that. And where were we? The shutoff surfaces. OK, so clicking on that, notice the green message in the upper left tells us now that it should be separable. 
and you can see the, the shutoff surface it actually is creating right here. Now that display looks a little odd because we actually now have overlapping geometry, right? The original orange dustpan is still there, but there's also surface bodies that were created on top of it, and those will ultimately be used to remove the material from our core cavity bodies, and we'll do that soon. So I'm just isolating these, but you can see those mold folders also listed at the left. They were automatically created, and that helps organize these new surface bodies. So I'm just switching between them so you can see, but their surfaces, zero thickness, and you can even see um, how that shutoff surface came into play here. Okay, so going back to our part. So now I'm going to go ahead and create the parting surface. So we had the parting line already created. Parting surface is just going to extend outwards from that previous parting line. So in addition to defining the width over here at the left, I can also turn on this smoothing option. So if you watch that corner um, right there, the smoothing, it can help manufacturing and help with the wear of the tooling. So it's just slight rounding those edges. So it should help everything last a little bit longer. So in preparation for the tooling split now, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to need to create a plane up here. So I can just create one offset from that top, top face there. I just want to sketch the outer perimeter of what's going to be my mold insert. And I want to keep it symmetric. And as always, fully defining our sketch is definitely a best practice. And so using this sketch for the tooling split, it, it functions similar to an extrude command, right? I can tell it to go in those two different directions, and it's creating these two different halves. And you can see that the parting surface does not actually extend past this rectangular border. And so I'm turning on that interlock option, and that creates that tapered extension of the parting surface right from that edge. And so that's going to help with aligning and sealing the core and cavity too. So once complete, I now have the core and cavity solids in addition to our original dustpan solid. And that blue curve you saw there, that was just that parting line, so I, I went ahead and hid that one. So this is still a part file, right? It contains three solid bodies. So let's take a closer look at what we have there in the left. Give them some meaningful names. And then to spread it out, I can use a move command to basically resemble an exploded view. And then there's the colors still displayed from the surface bodies. So let's go ahead and hide those to make it even more clear. And now you can see the three solids, right? The core, cavity, and that original dust pans. So this being a multi-body part, you know, getting a bill of materials, stuff like that would be challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back together here. And I'm actually going to create an assembly that's driven from this multi-body part. So a save bodies command, all I have to do is can create the new part files, and they're going to have and maintain links to this master part, right? So changes will propagate. And I can also have it create the assembly automatically here. And once that's complete, that new assembly is actually immediately opened in the background. Let's take a look at it. And you can see the feature tree has the different components listed. And if I open this core, or you can see the feature manager at the left. It's really compact because it's linked to the solid geometry from the initial source part. 
and the external reference symbol is there as well. And just like we did in the part, creating the exploded view is going to make it even very clear. And then whenever you finish an exploded view, uh, pretty much just have to do an animation. Okay, so this next example, a little bit more advanced. But I'm going to create the core and cavity for this bottom half of this kitchen mixer. So it's more advanced part. We'll run into a few things that we didn't see in the dustpan. Um, but just like the dustpan, I'm going to start with a draft analysis. And we can see some yellow faces there. That's what we get if it, um, indicating that draft is, is required, right? It's going to need to be added. So using the draft command, identify my neutral plane, set our draft angle at one degree, and then just choose all these faces to apply it to. And once complete, the colors will update. So it makes it easy to see if maybe I, I misselect one, which is a little bit of a challenge. OK, I think we got them. So turn that off. So now that we're all set with the draft situation, we're, we're very concerned about any undercut geometry. Right? And if we find any, that's going to need special consideration when we actually design this tooling. So we, we have this undercut analysis tool. Quick scan, and we can see that these, there they are, the vent holes at the right, they contain some undercut geometry. So something like that, that's going to require a side core in our tooling design. So continuing, um, let's account for shrinkage. So I'll scale this 3% larger again. And then we'll start the mold tool design once again with a parting line. reruns the draft analysis. And we did get that same message, right, about requiring some shutoff services. Well, that's no surprise. So showing these shutoff services, I can adjust how that large cut is separated, or sorry, is shut off. And then we also have these vent holes that were not automatically. And that's because they're in the same direction of pull. So I can just right click them, choose select tangency, and that, that's grabbing all these loops. And now I see the message at the left turn green. So shut off surfaces complete. And now we can go on to the next step here. Creating the parting surface is easy for this one. I'm not going to do an interlock here. So I just need to make sure that I make it large enough to go past the tooling body perimeter. Just like before, I want to sketch the, the perimeter of that tooling body. Uh, let's do a center line to help make sure it's centered. And again, I just need to stay within that parting surface. Looks like that'll work. And then tooling split is that command that is going to give me the, the two halves, right, the core and cavity. So exploding these make it easy to look at that problem area where we have that undercut. So it's just a matter of me clicking and dragging these things. But obviously, in real life, we'd have some trouble trying to pull those things apart. And that's the area that we're going to work on now. Now, let's 
put it back together here. And so now we're going to go ahead and create that side core we were talking about for that area. So the core tool, it functions similar to a split feature that you may have used before in, in part design. Um, it's going to maintain the same geometry that we have, but it lets us separate portions off into other solid bodies. So we just need to sketch the shape that we want this side core to have. Again, keeping it centered on the part. And mirroring that's gonna gonna help with that, and then fully defining it. Notice that it's actually overlapping into the uh, the core body there. Um, that's fine. It's only actually gonna be doing the split to the to the body that I actually have hidden right now. So that's why I have it overlap. So let's continue fully defining that one. Now let's show that body. And then here's the core command. And for the depth, I just need to make sure it goes past that outer wall. If it goes too deep, see what the problem, that would create an additional body there. So it looked like the initial value of 18 was plenty. And I also had it add draft, right, to help it get located correctly. Pulling these apart again, we can see exactly how this new side core is going to help us get over that undercut region. So there's our side core. Put it back together. So using that same core tool, another another use, great use for it, is we can split out geometry for maybe the core pins. So it's great for creating more machinable geometry, or maybe easily replaceable portions of your tooling, and creating ejector portions of your tooling would also be frequently done this way. So those pins, I'm just my new sketch that I'm using for the core tool. I'm just grabbing these edges and doing our convert entities. Could obviously make them any size. And then I already still have the steps from my previous um, move bodies, right, where I was exploding it. Yes, let me just reorder these, and then I can explode it once again to make it easy to see what we have. Not the best um, positioning of them, but makes it clear that we now have those additional uh, core pins. and putting them back together. And now, just like before, common next step would be saving this multi-body part as an assembly. Remember, it will automatically open that new assembly it's opening a window in the background. And then, like I did before, let's explode the assembly file. And then we can see the animation, this time with the side core and core pins. I 
behind this one, I just saved the, the tooling, right? I did not resave the solid body or the, the designed part. And then let's close that. So the last thing I really want to show today is just a quick example of a completed mold base assembly. So it's created just like we did for these mold inserts, right? Core commands, and we're used to create pins, side cores, lifters. I have these different configurations. And then it was then organized into different sub-assemblies sort of group it for the, the moving and the fixed halves. And this was all placed in a supplier provided standard mold base file, right? So then I made a few additional cuts to it and you can see the inserts that we modeled. So just a cool example of sort of taking this, these steps to sort of the next level. But a lot of times you don't need to do this. It all depends on, on what your role is. You might just need to do the inserts. And then once those are designed, other individuals might be doing those final steps. So just to recap, we looked at draft and undercut in our designed part. Uh, we did some scaling to account for shrinkage main thing we were doing is we created those core and cavity bodies that required some shutoff surfaces, side cores, and we got into those core pins. So that's all the time we have. So thanks again for joining us as we looked at those uh, pretty powerful mold tools. And hopefully you saw that they are really easy to use. We do have other webinars that are coming up, so please join us and, and check these out as well. Thank you very much, Greg. Very clear, concise, and informative as always. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you very much for the presentation, Greg. And I hope to see everyone at one of our future webcasts throughout 2019.